Tuesday, around 7pm, I took a train to Jogland, Clapham Sound. I think I was looking to buy a carnivorous plant from a nearby garden centre, but by the time I left the station, I was desperate to take a piss. The need for privacy guided me and my bloated bladder onto the common where I was disappointed to discover a lack of appropriate spots. I realised this search for privacy might take longer than I expected, so I zipped up my coat and proceeded to distance myself from the high street and push on into the wilderness. As I was walking, I became aware of a melody going round and round in my head. It was like a sort of bass line that, that went bum 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 ba ba dum bum 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 ba ba dum dum bum bum dum bum bum ba da da dum da da to my frustrations, it started to rain in that irritatingly ethereal drizzle that could seemingly soak even the most hydrophobic of skin. In a statement of resistance, I put up my otherwise defenseless umbrella. You see, by this time my boots had already sufficiently sponged up enough liquid to justify the liberal use of the word sodden when describing my feet and legs. It was around then that I came to a grove of deciduous trees. With just the right balance of good coverage and easy access, the spot would have been ideal if it were not for the dock. I was on the verge of relief when I noticed this fat, inbred dog that couldn't really breathe properly, standing around three metres away from me. It's hard to describe what happened between us. The dog had the most inquisitive, hypnotic gaze that I couldn't help but meet. And it was as though the dog knew that I knew that the dog knew what was in store for me. God knows how long I was under the spell of that wheezing dog oracle, but by the time I left the grove, I realised I had completely forgotten to urinate. Going back in was most certainly not with the cards, so I resolved to find a new place to piss. Now, it's around here that my story starts to become a bit more... unusual. The sun was getting low in the sky and the song in my head was rudely interrupted by the sound of a crow. I spun around and saw a woman in her mid-forties and a man who looked like he was approaching seventy. The man wasn't wearing any shoes. In fact, I'm almost certain they were both aging hippies. I think that in the hope they were in possession of some sort of toilet, I asked them if they could help me. So they took me by the hand and led me to a shabby looking two-man tent. On the way, I seem to remember them mentioning something about a stool transplant for my choleric temperament, but for some reason I was too busy thinking about whether or not I had ever descaled a castle to take anything in. The tent was sort of steaming, and like some unsuspecting victim, I unzipped it and crawled inside, 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 inside. Thank you.
inside me that wasn't there when I left the house. The best way that I can describe it is that it was like something inside me had been vivisected with my entire history. All of my past lives, dating back to what feels like infinity, were spliced into my very being and now I was merely a vessel for this new entity that would lie dormant inside me until Someday the opportune moment would eventually arise and it would unleash itself upon all the feasts upon the foundations of this world and symbiotically join them like some well-meaning yet ultimately corrupt end of fight. These thoughts were weighing heavy on my mind when at long last I got on the bus. I took the 249 towards Jasmine Grove. Incidentally, as soon as I got on the bus, 
I'm fucking pissed myself.